Probably eat the girl. It was good, but basically, we were trying to Wall of Wonder, uh, the wonder will be when people put the information up on the wall. We're going from the past to the current 10 years um, that we're celebrating and through to, through to the future. There you go. Okay. Right. Good morning everybody. Good morning. Thank you all for coming. It's a pretty exciting day for those of us who, uh, who have been on the organising committee for this little event. So we're really pleased um, to find you have it happening um, and to see you all here. My name is Marie Conway. Um, I completed, uh, well, the graduate diploma year of the course in 2004. Um, took a year's leave of absence intending to come back and um, do the master's year. <laughs> haven't got back there yet. <laughs> but I will one day. I'll be back. Promise. Um, it was a life-changing experience for me, and I mean that's why I'm still involved whenever I can be in doing these sorts of things and staying connected with Swinburne. I worked there for a long time as well, almost 15 years, so, so Swinburne had a special place in my heart. Um, all of you here today, though, have contributed to the course in some way, um, either as a student or some other connection, teaching, so that's why you're here. We all care about the course and the program. And so today is a celebration of the last 10 years of that program and what's to come. It's a celebration of you as well, what's to come. So the invitation that went out to you um, to come today, to gather today, talked about um, 2010 marked <coughs> 10 years of audacious and dynamic educating and learning about strategic foresight through Swinburne. So I went to my favourite source, dictionary.com, <laughs> and um, just looked at the definitions. Audacious means extremely bold and daring, recklessly brave, fearless, extremely original, without restriction to prior ideas, highly inventive, recklessly bold in defiance of convention, propriety, law, or the like, <coughs> insolent, brazen, lively, unrestrained, and uninhibited. Dynamic means pertaining to or characterised by energy or effective action, vigorously active or forceful, energetic. I don't know about you, but when I read that, I went, These, those two words, audacious and unfailing and dynamic, represent the essence of the course for me, and I think the work we do in the field is. Yes. And particularly when the course started at Swinburne, um, being extremely bold or daring was, was the way the Vice Chancellor operated, but then it was, it was up to, to Richard and Peter and, and all of us really to, to keep that flavour in the policy system. <coughs> the invitation also said today is about connection and new connections between people, and we received a really strong message when we sent out a survey before we started organising this about what you wanted on the day. And the clear message that came back to us was the day we needed to be about you. So that's how we've designed the day. We've structured this opening session and we've structured our closing session, but in between we're using open space technology so that you can structure the day in ways that are meaningful for you and that suit you. Okay. I want to um, introduce the organising committee now. Most of them are here, I think. We met over Skype over the past few months. We um, file sharing sites, we had numerous emails, um, and I want to thank all the people who I was involved with on the committee, some of which, some of whom I didn't meet until today. So, so it, was, um, it was a great experience, so thank you very much for that experience. It was a real pleasure to organise this event, which is why I'm really happy to be here. So I just wanted to introduce you all. There's Barbara at the back. <laughs> Rose Broadstock was on the committee, but she's not here today. Um, Sarah's not here either today, is it? No, Sarah, Sarah Pina, Lisa Simone, Peter, um, Karen, Richard, Monica, and Gretchen. And yourself. <laughs> and yourself. <laughs> um, we're going to have the Wall of Wonder um, next, then we'll have morning tea. The time between after morning tea and just before afternoon tea will be the open space. Sessions, and we'll come back together for a closing um, at 3:30. So it's a bit.
fairly simple program. This session we call the World of Wonder, um, and it is an opportunity to share ideas and concepts um, about everything that uh, Marie just talked about, um, to reflect on the past 10 years and um, the future, and um, <coughs> to identify relationships between these things, and, um, and identify potential uh, in the future as well. So, um, you've all got markers and paper on your seats, and um, Josh and Rowena are going to help me put these things up so that uh, we continue to move this fairly quickly. Um, I am going to start with acknowledging the traditional owners of the land, the past, the present. And future, and I'll give you the rules. So we need one idea per page. So if there's more than one idea per page, then it's not transferable, so we can't move it around. Um, it needs to be visible from the back of the room. Can you see that? Cool. Um, and not just for the camera, but so the people at the back of the room can see. Um, we need at least two words on a piece of paper. And we need no more than six words. It's a bit of a trick, you know. And we know that some people cheat, but of course we've got to remember here's a book for the back room so that we can talk about stuff as it goes up. And you know, that's uh, part of connecting with each other is being able to see each other's ideas and, and uh, reflect on and talk about them together. So rather than putting your name on a full piece, if you could tear it in half and make it that size, so put your name and the year that you started the course on a piece of paper. And what we're going to do is look at the things up on the wall. Things about the past that I um, think for you provide some historical context for this course. So for me, just giving you an example, uh, indigenous people living in harmony with the environment is part of the context for this course in history. For me. So, whatever your perspective is, um, you can be just in that, and, and then um, there's many of these ideas about the past and the context of the course that you can think of, but one idea per page. So, you know, three or four or six ideas, you've got plenty of paper there, there's more paper in the box. Um, so just write them down and, um, and keep your name on your knee, that's good, but keep your ideas down first. So I'll just take this off. So while I'm introducing um, ourselves to each other, I thought we'd start by if Rowena's going to put up the name. Well, let's start with you, Rowena. We can put you up first. <laughs> Stick into that wall. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> And if you could just say, because I think you're holding it, your yep. historical piece of context. I oh, didn't get that far, I was collecting names. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. so for me, the um, Indigenous people looking after the land has to do with the big picture, the sorts of things that we were talking about in the course and, and why we need to look after the land today and why we need uh, the course that we've got about the foresight and what we're doing with the future. So yeah, that's my um, piece. And um, as Rowena puts up your name, if you could just knowledge about other places over time, you know, rather than just my village, it's then, you know, there's my other spaces and the other side of the world, etc. So that's about learning about the existence of other places. Yeah, it's about meaning to think differently. At the time I was working as a murderer, and we were trying to actually use this, use this stuff, future stuff, in our planning as we were, and the Vice Chancellor said to me one day, you don't have a job anymore, we've got this new one we'd like <laughs> um, and so I learned about it and, and for me the, the key thing that I was always trying to do was to get people to think a bit differently um, about the future, about the future that Swinburne had. Two things that I've been able to link together in thinking about this just now. One is Limits to Growth. The book itself published when I was about two or three years old. Um, but the idea itself, um, I think, 
very influential throughout my life for a number of reasons. And so I'll, I'll put it down here somewhere. But then connecting to that reading in 2003, Richard Borden's forward to Richard Slaughter's book, Futures for the Third Millennium. Um, when I read that, I saw that here was a, a response to this that was something I could really get involved with and get my teeth into. Peter Haywood. <coughs> um, yeah, I think I put up the moon landing as well. Oh, I think I said, yeah, because yeah. I mean, I was, I was 12 and um, that right whole, the far end. just being a little kid in high school when they stopped classes and they showed us this historical event, I was just blown away by the whole thing. But then what, what actually really blew me away was how people quickly thought it made it just dirt. In a matter of about three or four years later, it was just uninteresting and I was simply going to the moon again and I was and I was more caught up in how people were excited and then lost interest in it as quickly as that. And that, that kind of to me set up the because to me I couldn't understand why people would were seeing this as less audacious and less just incredible. And that just kind of stuck with me. That was one of those things that I think kind of opened up the space for me. discussions about, as a group of um, sustainability practitioners, where we go now. And someone mentioned Swinburne. And it's interesting, I'm the only person who's actually ended up coming across. But mm. for me, it's about sustainability and how do you, at a corporate level, move beyond just talking about sustainability. It's this nice idea. Actually, join it. <laughs> we don't go back far enough. We don't go back far enough. About 9,000 years ago, humans started settling in cities, which means we had the capacity to create the sort of specialisation that allowed people like this to emerge. Okay, at a very practical level, um, I needed um, a PhD um, to give me some little, little, little whatever the word is. I wanted to be feel um, that I can stand in front of people and um, be acknowledged for who I am, so that's at a very practical level. But at the same time, going further back, so that's almost in the same year, um, I, I, I for very many years thought um, that things weren't working as well as I thought it could. And so I've always um, sought for ways of making things work better. So that could be 1960s or 70s or 80s. Jennifer. My second word is significance, and I think it, a lot of this. I've done three subjects, and um, there's a lot of stuff that really makes sense, and it it kind of helps to put people in the context of the past and the future, and the responsibility and the privileges, and I think that's the sort of stuff that is bubbling up for me. So I had a couple of sort of fairly historic specific historic events. The first one I had was actually the Berlin Wall and I'm just going to move that one a little bit because it needs to come before the EU for me. And I think, you know, really interesting, and there's obviously many other things that have happened that have kind of been towards the unification of, you know, tribes, if you like. And I think they're the sorts of unification we're going to need to solve the global problems we're facing, whether it's climate change, energy, you know, just even just the social kind of um, challenges we're facing. And so just in, in sort of, since we are talking about foresight, and I think, well, there's one on the front there, but I've got a historic one on the front there, which is the reunification of Korea. Um, and I'm not sure whether it's close to 2020. <laughs> 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 okay, um, we're going to get to that then. <laughs> um, but look, that's just one of many things that would need to happen for us to be able to have a global solution to some of the global problems. Thank you.